Desexualizing your brain is a cheat code, but is it really though? It sounds good on the surface, but desexualizing your brain, especially as a man with high testosterone, might be borderline impossible. For you to completely desexualize your brain, you might as well start taking some estrogen pills or even go monk mode and climb the highest mountain and just stay there around no woman, around no people, so that you completely focus on your energy and not be sexualized whatsoever. Or you can just get married, have kids. That seems to work too. All jokes aside, I actually do believe this is unrealistic. And the reason is, is because the reason why men almost do anything is to gain the likes of attractive women. Think of why we have fast cars. Think of why societies have been built. Think of why capitalism even exists as a whole. If you look into the history of why things are done, especially by men, it's usually to be more attractive to women. So do you think a completely desexualized man will have the pursuit and drive to fully conquer his goals? Probably not, but here's what you can do instead. That is not be controlled by lust. I think that's a better term than desexualizing your brain because as a man, you will always have sexual urges and your sexual mind will always be present, especially in a hypersexualized society. We don't wanna get rid of it, but we wanna master it and have control of it. And the first way you can do this is by establishing sexual discipline. A lot of men never build sexual discipline, but if you do, you will stop looking at women with lust and you will overall start to view women for who they are as people. And the first way you can do this is just by sleeping with girls you genuinely find attractive. I don't know about you guys, but I've had my time period where I was pretty much getting anything I could get. That usually comes with a lot of inexperience and just being new to women, especially if you're a guy and you're not really that attractive yet. Most guys usually get what they can get, even if the woman is just overall less attractive or they're not even attracted to them. Think about that. A lot of guys sleep with women they're not even attracted to just to solely get a nut off. So the way you can fix this is just sleep with women you actually find attractive. And I know, Digital Romy, I'll teach guys how to use dating apps effectively. And I always say this, if you see a woman, especially on a dating app, let's say you're swiping right, swiping left, and you tell yourself that you will only have sex with this woman one time. Like, just looking at her, you guys know if you will only have sex with a woman one time or just a few times and that's it, then that's probably a sign that you probably shouldn't swipe right on that girl. And if you find yourself only attracting women that you're not really that excited for, then that shows that you yourself as a man need to level up. Now, I'm not one of these constant creators who are like, oh, sexual discipline, start young, you were your 18, I engaged in casual sex, but now I regret doing it and I'm not proud about it. I feel like a lot of content creators are hypocrites because they say not to engage in casual sex and to have sex with this girl, but if they were to do it over again, they would still do the same thing, right? So I believe every man should have their phase of maybe, you know, sleeping with unattractive women so they get it out of their system. But as you get wiser, as you get older, definitely start to be more selective of who you're dealing with because that will in itself build more sexual discipline and you won't have the need or the will or urge to sleep with every woman who finds you attractive. Now we did talk about casual sex and I do believe casual sex in itself is a vice. Like people don't wanna talk about that, but just like doing drugs, just like drinking alcohol, just like engaging in social media, casual sex in itself is a big dopamine hit. And for that reason, to some degree, it is a vice. And everybody has their vices, right? Casual sex may be yours, this other person might be weed, so another person might be a combination of everything. But in terms of building sexual discipline, you do wanna overall try to avoid casual sex and just overall build more meaningful connections and relationships with women. And you can do this non-exclusively, right? You've heard of the whole term rotation or you know, just seeing a handful of women at a time. That can build a sexual discipline in itself because I went through phases where I was casually dating and having like a ton of casual sex, but also I've had time frames where I was only seeing two or three girls on a consistent long-term basis without seeing anything else new. And that actually built more sexual discipline about myself because I felt like, you know, I had more control over my lust and how I saw a woman and I wasn't eager to sleep with every girl who found me attractive. Now, as I said before, we live in a hyper-sexualized society. So fully controlling your lust is going to be very, very, very difficult if you're constantly on social media. Clearly you're on social media right now listening to me, but if you take a look on Instagram, and I know my explore pages like this, but every time I go on Instagram, every time I go on TikTok, I am bombarded with twerking, with half naked IG models, with booty pictures. I'm like, oh my God, bro. Like, even if I wanted to, I just simply can't avoid women sexualizing themselves. And it's funny, women complain about men sexualizing them, but take a look at it. 
women always sexualize themselves and for that reason they almost perpetuate this view of lust and sexual attention towards themselves and usually they do it for profit if they are doing it but a lot of them do this shit for free man like they just want likes and validation so what you want to do is just try to remove those sexual social media triggers honestly if i wasn't a content creator i would not have tiktok whatsoever tiktok is great for learning sometimes but for the most part if you don't create your for you page you'll consistently be bombarded with women craving sexual attention from men so if you're not using tiktok for meaningful purposes i will honestly just delete the app i would definitely unfollow every ig model who you follow and some of you guys still be following them like on my explore page every now and then i'll take a look at these ig models pictures and i see friends of mine people you know i've been knowing for years underneath these girls pictures and liking their pictures you know how it says like by so and so and so and so i'm like Bro, like, you know you're never gonna see her. You know you're just giving her free attention and these guys still decide to follow and like their pictures. And I'm sure these are the same exact guys who are fully not in control of their lust. And for that reason, that's why they're constantly engaging with these IG models, right? I, I think to some degree it's actually embarrassing for a guy to follow a lot of IG models who doesn't follow them back. In fact, a lot of women have said this is an ick of theirs. So if you're meeting a girl on Instagram or dating apps and she sees that you follow, a handful of IG models who definitely don't follow you back. Now, if they follow you back is a different story, right? That's that's a form of pre-selection. That's that's where that's what I do. But if you guys are following girls and they don't follow you back, not only are you engaging in sexualized social triggers, which will perpetuate you going into fapping and then viewing women as sexual objects and not being controlled or having any sort of sexual discipline, but also it's just overall unattractive. Now let's talk about porn and drugs. We all know it's bad, right? I'm not here to come say, oh, stop watching porn. Uh, I done said it a million times, you done heard a million times. You know that porn is bad, right? But I think looking at it at a deeper level, you have to understand why porn is bad from a lust standpoint. Whenever you start to watch a lot of porn, I'm talking about like you're watching it daily or like even every other day, the way you go about life and just society overall is more through a sexual lens. You just start viewing women sexually because pretty much the only time you're viewing women or probably interacting with them is them having sex on a screen. So just overall, it's not really good for your mental health. And I've noticed me myself, like not engaging in porn for a consistently long period of time, I am able to desexualize my brain even more and just not be controlled by lust in itself. And then also drugs alongside with that, think of weed, alcohol. If you engage in these vices on a regular basis, what happens is that you'll start to lose your logic in terms of your lust, and then your lust will once again take over you. I've had time periods, and now I'm gonna be completely vulnerable here. I've had time periods where I'm not watching porn, but you know, I, I took a hit of the pen, I might have taken a little bit of an edible, and after that is like my logic and sense of being controlled and having sexual discipline goes out the window. And then that's because of the effects of the drug. It makes you lose a sense of common sense. So for that reason, overall, just avoiding anything that triggers cheap dopamine, like drugs and porn, will be better for you in the long run. But I encourage you guys to seek out why, the reason why. You guys know that it's bad, but actually watch videos, read books, listen to podcasts on why this stuff is bad and actually help you control it better. Now, lastly, you wanna enjoy life without the acknowledgement or pursuit of women. I know we talked about at the beginning how a lot of men do things in order to gain the likes of attractive women, but in order to fully break free from your lust, you need to start doing things without chasing women or women being a part of it. Think about why guys go out to nightclubs, bars, clubs, whatever, is usually to meet and talk to girls or to at least look at them, you know, damn she bad sort of vibes, right? I've had the best times in terms of nightlife and just doing things in general. Whenever I have no sort of expectations of meeting a girl, talking to a girl, I'm just there genuinely to have fun. So if you can do things with a genuine purpose without women being attached to it all the time, then you will break free from your lust and you'll start to actually enjoy life more. So that includes just going to the gym to work out. I know me and some friends talked about, you know, going to a gym because the hot girls are there. They provide some extra motivation, but you also need those gyms and those time periods where you're there solely just to get a good workout. You don't care if all dudes are there. You don't care if nobody's there for the most part. You're just there solely to reach your goals and you don't need any sort of external motivation, especially women, to get you going. Now, follow these steps to fully break free from your lust and start having more control over your life. 
Up next, be sure to watch this video where I talk about the power dynamics in relationships and how you can actually have more power and leverage with a girl that you're currently seeing. So be sure to watch that one next.